The simple steps we have set down here are not untested theories. They are not one man's guesses and opinions. They are proven approaches to life's situations, and they are universally applicable steps that work and work like magic. That you're listening to this proves you are interested in larger success. You want to fulfill your desires. You want to enjoy a fine standard of living. You want this life to deliver to you all the good things you deserve. Being interested in success is a wonderful quality. You have another admirable quality. The fact that you're listening to this program shows you have the intelligence to look for tools that will help take you where you want to go. In building anything, automobiles, bridges, missiles, we need tools. Many people, in their attempt to build a successful life, forget there are tools to help them. You have not forgotten. You have then the two basic qualities needed to realize real profit from this book. A desire for greater success and the intelligence to select a tool to help you realize that desire. Think big and you'll live big. You'll live big in happiness, you'll live big in accomplishment, big in income, big in friends, big in respect. Enough for the promise. Start now, right now to discover how to make your thinking make magic for you. Start out with this thought of the great philosopher Disraeli. Life is too short to be little. What this book will do for you. In every chapter of this book, you will find dozens of hard-headed, practical ideas, techniques, and principles that will enable you to harness the tremendous power of thinking big, so as to gain for yourself the success, happiness, and satisfaction you want so much. Every technique is dramatically illustrated by a real-life case history. You discover not only what to do, but what is even more important, he had with him on the platform the leading representative in the organization, a very ordinary looking fellow who earned in the year just ended just a little under $60,000. The earnings of other representatives averaged $12,000. The executive challenged the group. Here is what he said. I want you to take a good look at Harry. Look at him. Now what's Harry got that the rest of you haven't? Harry earned five times the average, but is Harry five times smarter? No, not according to our personnel tests. I checked. They show he's about average in that department. And did Harry work five times harder than you fellows? No, not according to the reports. In fact, he took more time off than most of you. Did Harry have a better territory? Again, I've got to say no. The accounts averaged about the same. Did Harry have more education, better health? Again, no. Harry is about as average as an average guy could be, except for one thing. The difference between Harry and the rest of you, said the vice president. The difference is that Harry thought five times bigger. Then the executive proceeded to show that success is determined not so much by the size of one's brain, as it is by the size of one's thinking. This was an intriguing thought, and it stayed with me. The more I observed, the more people I talked with, the deeper I dug into what's really behind success, the clearer was the answer. Get the thinking big view of your job. Think above trivialities and concentrate on what's important. Test yourself. Find out how big your thinking really is. Use creative thinking to find new and better ways to get things done. Develop creative power by believing it can be done. Fight mind-freezing traditional thinking. Do more and do it better by turning on your creative power. Use the three keys to strengthening creativity by opening your ears and your mind. Stretch your thinking and stimulate your mind. Harness and develop your ideas, the fruit of your thinking. Look important because it helps you think important. Become important by thinking your work is important. Build your own sell yourself to yourself commercial. Upgrade your thinking 
Think like important people think. Make your environment work for you. Prevent small people from holding you back. Manage your work environment. Get plenty of psychological sunshine during leisure hours. Throw thought poison out of your environment. Go first class in everything you do. Grow the attitudes that will help you win what you want. Get activated, get enthusiastic. Develop the power of real enthusiasm. Grow the you are important attitude. Make more money by getting the put service first attitude. Win the support of other people by thinking right toward them. Become more likable by making yourself lighter to lift. Take the initiative in building friendships. Master the technique of thinking only good thoughts about people. Win friends by practicing conversation generosity. Think big even when you lose or receive a setback. Get the action habit. You don't need to wait until conditions are perfect. Case history after case history proved that the size of bank accounts, the size of happiness accounts, and the size of one's general satisfaction account is dependent on the size of one's thinking. There is magic in thinking big. If thinking big accomplishes so much, why doesn't everyone think that way? I've been asked that question many times. Here, I believe, is the answer. All of us, more than we recognize, are products of the thinking around us. And much of this thinking is little, not big. All around you is an environment that is trying to tug you, trying to pull you down second class street. You are told almost daily that there are too many chiefs and not enough Indians. In other words, that opportunities to lead no longer exist, that there is a surplus of chiefs. So be content to be a little guy. But this too many chiefs idea simply doesn't square with the truth. Leading people in all occupations will tell you, as they've told me, that the trouble is there are too many Indians and not nearly enough chiefs. This petty, petty environment says other things too. It tells you whatever will be, will be, that your destiny is outside your control, that fate is in complete control. So forget those dreams, forget that finer home, forget that special college for the children, forget the better life. Be resigned, lie down and wait to die. Make up your mind to do something about your ideas. Use action to cure fear and gain confidence. Discover the secret of mind action. Capitalize on the magic of now. Strengthen yourself by getting the speak up habit. Develop initiative, a special kind of action. Discover that defeat is nothing more than a state of mind. Salvage something from every setback. Use the force of constructive self-criticism. Achieve positive results through persistence and experimentation. Whip discouragement by finding the good side to every situation. Multiply your energy by setting definite goals. Set goals that will help you get things done and live longer. Accomplish your goals with this 30-day improvement guide. Invest in yourself for future profit. Learn the four rules of leadership. Develop your power to trade minds with the people you want to influence. Put the be human approach to work for you. Think progress, believe in progress, push for progress. And who hasn't heard the statement that success isn't worth the price? As if you have to sell your soul, your family life, your conscience, your set of values to reach the top. But in truth, success doesn't demand a price. Every step forward pays a dividend. This environment also tells us there's too much competition for the top spots in life. But is there? A personnel selection executive told me that he receives 50 to 250 times as many applicants for jobs that pay $10,000 per year as for jobs that pay $50,000 a year. This is to say that there is at least 50 times as much competition for jobs on second class street 
as for jobs on First Class Avenue. First Class Avenue, USA is a short, uncrowded street. There are countless vacancies waiting there for people like you who dare to think big. The basic principles and concepts supporting the magic of thinking big come from the highest pedigree sources, the very finest and biggest thinking minds yet to live on planet Earth. Minds like the prophet David who wrote, as one thinketh in his heart, so is he. Minds such as Emerson who said, great men are those who see that thoughts rule the world. Minds like Milton who in Paradise Lost wrote, the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell or a hell of heaven. Amazingly perceptive minds like Shakespeare who observed there is nothing either good or bad except that thinking makes it so. But where does the proof come from? How do we know the master thinkers were right? Fair questions. The proof comes from the lives of the select people around us who through winning success, achievement, and happiness, prove that thinking big does work magic. You see exactly how to apply each principle to actual situations and problems. Here then is what this book will do for you. It will show you how you can launch yourself to success with the power of belief, win success by believing you can succeed, Defeat disbelief and the negative power it creates. Get big results by believing big. Make your mind produce positive thoughts. Develop the power of belief. Plan a concrete success building program. Vaccinate yourself against excusitis, the failure disease. Learn the secret that lies in your attitude toward health Take four positive steps to lick health excusitis. Discover why your thinking power is more important than mere intelligence. Use your mind for thinking, not simply as a warehouse for facts. Master three easy ways to cure intelligence excusitis. Overcome the problem of age, being too young or too old. Conquer luck excusitis and attract good luck to you. Use the action technique to cure fear and build confidence. Manage your memory so as to increase your store of confidence. Overcome your fear of other people. Increase self-confidence by satisfying your own conscience. Think confidently by acting confidently. Learn the five positive steps to build confidence and destroy fear. Discover that success is measured by the size of your thinking. Measure your true size and find out what assets you have. Think as big as you really are. Develop the big thinker's vocabulary with these four specific steps. Think big by visualizing what can be done in the future. Add value to things, to people, and to yourself. Test yourself to learn whether you are a progressive thinker. Tap your supreme thinking power. Use the magic of thinking big in life's most crucial situations. Chapter 1. Believe you can succeed and you will. Success means many wonderful, positive things. Success means personal prosperity, a fine home, vacations, travel, new things, financial security, giving your children maximum advantages. Success means winning admiration, leadership, being looked up to by people in your business and social life. Success means freedom, freedom from worries, fears, frustrations, and failure. Success means self-respect, continually finding more real happiness and satisfaction from life, being able to do more for those who depend on you. Success means winning. Success, achievement, is the goal of life. Every human being wants success. Everybody wants the best this life can deliver. Nobody enjoys crawling, living in mediocrity. No one likes feeling second class and feeling forced to go that way. Some of the most practical success-building wisdom 
is found in that biblical quotation stating that faith can move mountains. Believe, really believe you can move a mountain, and you can. Not many people believe that they can move mountains. So, as a result, not many people do. On some occasion, you've probably heard someone say something like, it's nonsense to think you can make a mountain move away just by saying, mountain, move away. It's simply impossible. People who think this way have belief confused with wishful thinking. Ideas can be life-changing, and sometimes all you need is just one more in a series of good ideas. It's like dialing the numbers into the lock. Right? You got five or six numbers dialed into the lock. The lock still won't come open, but you don't need five or six more numbers. Maybe you just need one more, and maybe a seminar like this could do it. A sermon could do it. A lyric from a song could do it. A dialogue from a movie could do it. A conversation with a friend might do it. That one last piece you need, number. Dial it into the lock, that's it. The lock comes open, there's the door for you to walk through. And maybe this seminar today could furnish that for you. One more idea. I know you've come with a lot already. Sometimes we get the impression, I used to have that, that I only had this much going for me and I needed this much. Usually not true. And I'm sure not true of this audience, where I find you today, as well-dressed as you look today. You know, as fine as you are sitting here today, it isn't that, you know, you've got this much going for you and you need this much. I would assume you've got this much going for you and maybe all you need is just a few more thoughts, ideas, uh, to furnish you some ways and means to turn your life into the dream you want it to be. So, ideas. The seminar is going to be loaded with ideas. I want you to take good notes. But here's what else I hope you'll find here today, and that is inspiration. And who knows the mystery of inspiration? Why some people are inspired and some are not? You were inspired to get here, some were not. Who knows the mystery of that? I don't know. How come you made it? The rest of them didn't make it. We don't know what that mystery is. Some people turned it down. Some people said it cost too much. Some people said it's going to take too much time. Some people are too busy, right? A lot of different excuses why some are inspired to take advantage of something that comes to town. Others pass it up. We don't know the mystery to that. Here's what I call it, mysteries of the mind. And I just leave it at that. Some things I don't try to figure out. I take the simple approach now. Some people do and some people don't. I mean, that's about as profound as my philosophy is. Some buy and some don't buy. Some go for it and some don't. Some change and some don't. And if you've been around for a while, you can usually work out the numbers, right? Out of 10, you know, three do, seven don't. Whatever business you're involved in, pretty soon you got this ratio going. The ones that do, the ones that don't. You say, well, why don't the ones that don't, how come they don't? We don't know. I just leave it as a mystery. I used to try to understand all that. I just take the simple approach now. The guy says, this happens to me, this happens to me, this goes wrong for me, and all this stuff goes wrong for me. How come all this stuff happens to me? I say, I don't know. It beats me. <laughs> yeah, the best I've been able to figure out is those kind of things always happen to people like you. I mean, right? <laughs> That's the best I got. I don't know. I'm an amateur on this stuff. What do I know? So just take the simple approach, right? That's how it is. But my biggest responsibility is to make sure you get your time's worth. And the reason I say that is because time is more valuable than money. In fact, you might start your notes with that. Time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but unfortunately you can't get more time. If somebody asks you to spend your money, that's pretty easy, right? We live in America. We're wealthy. So the money's not the problem. But what if somebody asks you to spend a day, right? You got to think that over carefully. And I know you did. I wouldn't waste one of my days, not for anybody, not for anything. Once I understood how valuable they were, I don't waste any. But uh, to make an investment like today of your money and your time, I appreciate that. Today's gonna be costly for me. It's gonna cost me one of my days to be here, right? And some money, of course, but you know, I don't need the money. I take the money, but I, I, don't, I don't need the money. But guess what I do need? The time. So I'm here not to just joke with you. I'm here not to just tell some funny stories and give a performance and walk away. I'm here to give you some value. And I want to make it worth your time. 
I'm going to invest a day, you're going to invest a day, let's get the most out of it and see what we can walk away with today. Anyway, for you that have not seen me before, just very briefly, let me just tell you my story. I grew up in Idaho, farm country, southwest corner of Idaho. In fact, my father still lives on the old homestead where I grew up. Uh, he'll be 89 his next birthday, still hasn't retired. I'm proud of my dad. He's never been ill, he's really something. I'm trying to get him to retire this year, 88. I'm telling my father, what a good year to retire when you're 88. And he says, hey, talk to me in 10 years, right? I might be ready. But anyway, I went to high school, I graduated. I went to college one year. Halfway through my second year of college, I decided I was smart enough, so I quit. One of my major mistakes. I should have stayed in school. So anyway, that's how I got here. And I'm just delighted that this day has arrived, and I truly want to make it valuable for you. Let's go to work. Here's what I hope you'll find out of this seminar today for your notes. Here's what I hope you'll find. Number one, sincerity. Above all else today, I hope you'll find me sincere. Best place for people to start to communicate is sincerity on both sides. I'm sure you're sincere or you wouldn't be here today, right? To spend this kind of money, to spend this kind of time, roll up your sleeves today, go to work like I am, and get this message, uh, you've got to be sincere. So I assume you're sincere. Now I want you to see me sincere. But I've got a good note for you to make. Sincerity is not a test of truth. Important note to make. Sincerity is not a test of truth. We must not make the mistake of saying he must be right, he's so sincere. That would be a mistake. And here's why. It's possible to be sincerely wrong. So we don't mistake sincerity for truth, right? Sincerity is only a test of sincerity. Truth has to yet be tested by truth. Okay. But hopefully you will find me sincere and truthful. Next. A combination of things I hope you'll find here today. Ideas plus inspiration. Ideas plus inspiration. Ideas, business ideas and social ideas and personal ideas. We all need ideas, right? How to have a good day, ideas. How to have a good year, ideas. How to have your best year ever, ideas. Good health, ideas. Personal relationship, ideas. How to deal with your family, ideas. Sales management, ideas. Financial freedom for the future ideas. We all need good ideas. So today I hope you gather up by notes and by what you can remember a lot of ideas. I want to share as many with you as I possibly can in the time constraints we have. Today's going to go very rapidly. I used to think a day like this was a long day. Found out it's a pretty short day, but I'm going to go as fast as I can share with you as many ideas as I possibly can. And here's why ideas can be life changing. Uh, but I thought, heck, you know, I'm smart enough to get a job. That's what life's all about, right? Get a job, pay your bills, work hard, stay out of trouble, keep your fingers crossed, hope for the best. And I figured I was at least prepared to do that. So I quit college and uh, went to work. A little while later, got married, got my little family going. And I'm out there doing what I thought was the best I could. But about age 25, I'm starting to struggle. I've purchased a little more than I can conveniently pay for on time. And the creditors are starting to call saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. What's the deal? And I'm getting embarrassed by that. I'm also embarrassed, big mouth me, with all the fancy promises I made to get married. I'm way behind on those promises. And I'm getting discouraged, wondering what to do. And I thought, well, maybe I should go back to school. Right, one year of college, pretty short on an application. But, uh, you know, tough to go back to school, right? Especially when you got your family going. Time to stay is when you're there. Uh, so I discounted that. I thought, well, if I, you know, had my own business, that would be the way to go. But, you know, I'm short on money. Too much month at the end of the money. If you've ever been there, that's where I was, age 25. So I had to discount that. And I'm discouraged, wondering, where do I go from here? And then the miracle happened for me. Good fortune came my way. And who can explain good fortune? I don't know. 
remarkable things that happen to you at a particular time. Sometimes it's just unexplainable how those things happen. One of my friends says, well, hey, things don't just happen. Things happen just. Another good note here, notes: Things don't just happen. Things happen just. And maybe that's it. I don't know. I'm an amateur on life, just like most of us are, trying to figure it out, how to make it valuable. But I was ready. And my good fortune was, at age 25, I met a very wealthy man. His name was Mr. Schoff, Mr. Earl Schoff. A friend of mine had gone to work for him, and he started telling me about this man. He said, you got to meet this man I've gone to work for. He's wealthy, but he's easy to talk to. Uh, and he's got a unique philosophy of life. And the more he kept talking about this man, I thought, well, I've got to meet this man. So sure enough, shortly after that, I had a chance to meet this remarkable wealthy man, and I was impressed. He was wealthy. Sure enough, he was easy to talk to. I was so intrigued, within a few minutes, I said to myself, if I could be like him, farm boy from Idaho, if I could be like him, I'd give anything. And then I thought, if I could just get around somebody like him, and if he would teach me what to do, I would be willing to learn. I'm, I'm coachable. And that was my good fortune. A few months later, this wealthy man that I met, Mr. Show, took a liking to me, hired me, gave me a job, I went to work for him. And I spent the next five years in his employ. And then, unfortunately, he died at the end of that period, at age 49. His last five years, but the first five years of my new life, I got to spend with this remarkable man. And my dream came true. He coached me. He taught me. He taught me the books to read. He taught me the disciplines. He taught me the changes to make in my language and personality. And the things he shared with me during that five years literally changed my life, turned my life around, changed my income, changed my bank account, changed my future, changed everything. I've never been the same since that unique experience. And uh, I wish he was still alive today, Mr. Schoff. I'm sure if he was alive today, especially after this seminar, Idaho farm boy makes it to Dallas, Fort Worth, full house, standing room only. Uh, pretty awesome, I'm sure. If he was alive, I'd be calling him today saying, you won't believe what's happening to me. I've had a chance now to share with other people what you shared with me. But anyway, how I got here. Uh, 30 plus years ago, I was living in Beverly Hills, California. And one day a friend of mine, businessman friend, said, Jim, uh, would you, I'd like to have you come and share your story with my service club that I belong to, the Rotary Club. He said, I know your story, Idaho farm boy makes it to Beverly Hills. But he said, I think my club members would love to hear your story. He said, if I arranged one of our breakfast meetings, would you come tell your story? Just share a few thoughts. I said, okay. Uh, so I agreed to go give this breakfast talk. And guess what? They liked it. And my telephone rang. I got another call, got another call saying, we heard uh, you've given your story and shared some ideas. Would you come talk to our club? Talk to our club. First thing I know, I'm starting to devote a piece of my business time to giving these talks. And then one day, a uh, businessman who had heard my talk, I think two or three times, approached me and said, would you come and share that story and some thoughts with my management and salespeople? I said, I got this little company going. And he said, if you'd come tell your story to my organization, he said, I'd be happy to pay you. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be something? So I agreed to go do it, and I got paid. Little did I know, another fortune was waiting for me to translate my ideas into talks and speeches and seminars. Now I've written some books. It's on cassette tape. Now I get to travel around the world. Last year I was in Japan, Israel, Spain, uh, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, France. Germany, Canada, and now Dallas. <laughs> Idaho farm boy gets to travel around the world and share his story, and here I am today. Anyway, it's almost too much for me to comprehend from where I started, raised in obscurity, um, in a little small farm community, and now to be here today is pretty awesome for me. So anyway, that's just a little bit about my story. My story is probably more intriguing for me than it is for you, but I wanted to hear it again, so I thought I would just, you know, bore you with it. Anyway, I don't ask you to be impressed today. I'm the one that's impressed. 
from where I came from to have a chance. But that's the American dream, right? Come true, chance to start from scratch, start from obscurity, start with pennies, start with nothing, and have a chance to transform your life, change your life, set your goals, and see what you can accomplish.